Hey there, what's up internet? My name is Black Light Attack, and it's uh, it's been a while, hasn't it? It's um, been quite a bit since I've done one of these. Um, I'm, uh, I've, uh, I don't know that um, you want to get too excited yet. If you've been waiting with bated breath uh, for my return to YouTube, if you've been waiting um, all this time, if you're one of those people that keeps coming uh, coming into my streams or uh, messaging me on Twitter, asking when I'm coming back to YouTube, I, I wouldn't get too excited. Um, I uh, I guess I'm I'm here because I have uh, some some things to say, and um, you know it's not that I don't miss you guys. I do I do kind of miss you guys. So um, you know I just wanted to say something. I'm not, I'm not gonna do any like extra takes on this. So it's probably gonna be a lot of ums and ahs, and I'm, I apologize for that. I haven't done. A, um, a pre-recorded format in quite some time. I'm really, really not used to this. Uh, it's, it's been a while. It's been a couple months. Um, but uh, you may be wondering what's on your screen right now. This, I guess I'll do, uh, do a quick little bit about the game. Uh, this is called Risk, Risk of Rain. Uh, Risk of Rain is an indie game. It's a um, roguelike in that there, there's permadeath, um, which means you have to beat the game in one try. Uh, you don't get any extra lives. Although, funny enough, I think I get the one item during this run in, in this game that does give you an extra life if you die. Um, but it, it's, like, really rare to find. But uh, it's a very, very cool game. Um, it's uh, it's available on Steam. I think it's $15, $20, somewhere around there. Um, on Steam when it's not on sale, and it goes on sale pretty often. And uh, it's it's I've gotten tons and tons and tons of hours of gameplay out of it. It's... Uh, really, really fun. It's really difficult when you first start playing it, um, and that's kind of the part of the challenge and fun. And so, basically, the way this game works is you pick one of uh, ten classes. When you start the game, you only have one uh, class unlocked, the Commando. And uh, as you continue to play and uh, complete different in-game challenges, you unlock more and more classes and more and more items that you can potentially find. Um, and uh, that uh, that each, each of those items and each of those classes drastically changes the way that the game is played. Now I'm playing a class, he's not really a class, he's more of a character, I guess. His name is Acrid. Um, and Acrid is the one alien of the group. There's uh, one robot and run, one alien, I think the rest are just kind of assumed to be human. It takes place in like a futuristic setting. And um, Acrid's kind of a monster, kind of an alien, and he is a melee type character. He deals a lot of damage over time effects. Um, and he's kind of unique in that he's one of only a few characters who has no sort of like dodge mechanic or invincibility frames, like a dodge roll that makes him invincible for a little while. Uh, instead, he only has mobility in the form of his like slime trail, which boosts his speed a little bit. Um, and uh, the slime trail, of course, hurts enemies that are left behind. And so each character is is almost like a uh, MOBA character, like a League of Legends character or something, in that they they only have four moves, and uh, the fourth one is, is kind of their ultimate. It usually has a relatively long cooldown and like does the most damage or whatever. So Akrid's got his basic melee attack as his first ability, um, which does stack a damage over time. He's got a uh, poison spit which um, doesn't deal any damage over time, but does stun enemies and is very useful for keeping them off of you. Uh, his uh, slime trail that I was talking about and uh, his ultimate, which launches a projectile, uh, which deals a damage over time effect, which then spreads to other enemies and uh, can continue to spread if there's a whole bunch of enemies on the screen. So yeah, he has, Akrid has some of the best innate damage of the game when you stack his abilities together. Um, and uh, he's, he's a really quality character. A lot of people... Uh, he's usually one of the first melee characters you'll unlock. I think there's only f uh, there's four four melee characters in the game, and he's um, usually the first one you get. And you're like, ah, how am I gonna beat this game with a melee character? How am I gonna stay alive when I gotta be like in the fray? Um, but he's actually the best melee character in the game, in my opinion, one of the best characters in the game. But uh, it's uh, not too important about which who's best, who's worst. It's, it's all a matter of opinion anyway. Um, but uh, the basic way this game works is it's only six levels long, but it's good luck beating it on your first try. Uh, I don't know anybody who's beaten this game on their first try, because uh, it definitely takes some learning on how to survive, how to uh, how to not get chunked instantly, how to um, face these overwhelming odds, because the cool mechanic of this game is the longer it goes on, uh, the harder it gets. Um, the it, You see a timer in the upper right, it's at four and a half minutes now. Uh, the longer the timer goes on, the more the difficulty ramps up. Uh, the more enemies spawn, the stronger enemies are. Some enemies start spawning that have like special abilities. Um, and uh, it, later on, you might even start getting random bosses to spawn, when normally you only fight one boss per level. Um, but in addition to that, there's also three base difficulty levels. Um, there's Drizzle, which is the easiest, there's Rainstorm, which is medium, and then there's Monsoon, which is hard. 
I pretty much exclusively play on Monsoon, but when you first start, you might even want to drop it down to Drizzle, um, if not Rainstorm. So, uh, Monsoon is, is pretty much exclusively what I play on, unless I'm like going for unlocks or something, but at this point I've unlocked everything in the game, so. Um, it's, uh, it's super, super fun. They even just recently gave it a free uh, DLC like patch update, but um, uh, as, as you continue to kill enemies, you not only gain experience, which, uh, you know, as, as you level up, it boosts your stats, but um, you also gain money, and that can be used to buy these chests, uh, to unlock these chests, and those give you uh, random items that all have different effects, and um, you can see here I picked up an item, uh, it was a rare item, there's a couple different rarities, so you, you know, you'll find a bunch of common items, a few uncommon items, and then very few rare items. You also have a, a use item slot, um, which I, I picked up a good, pretty decent use item uh, early on, and I've been spamming that quite a bit. Um, but I just picked up a rare item that bo boosts the power of my um, of my uh, ultimate ability, which is very similar to, there's a very, it's actually a reference to, and similar to, an, a, an item that does the same thing in uh, in Dota, and Dota 2, I forget what it's called, it's like Scepter, I don't know, I don't play Dota, so. Um, so, uh, I think that's about all I have to say about the gameplay, you know, you just, you, basically what unlocks you get, it's kind of like Isaac, which unlocks you get, which random items you pick up, are kind of going to determine your, your run, how you have to play, and uh, whether or not you're going to survive. So, you know, bad RNG can end up screwing you over pretty bad. Um, so anyway, uh, here to talk about what we're going to talk about. I, I don't know if I'm going to let this whole game run, if, you know, maybe I'll upload the remainder in like a private video for anybody that wants to see how this game turned out, or if the commentary goes long enough, maybe I'll just uh, speed it up, and then that 4.30, 4 minutes and 30 second uh, time mark that I called out will be completely off, because I'll have sped up the gameplay, but whatever uh, whatever works. I doubt this is going to be a 45 minute commentary, but if it is, it is, whatever. Um, so, I, I owe it to you guys an explanation, and I'm putting this off until literally the last possible second I could to give you guys an explanation um, as to why I don't upload to YouTube anymore, am I coming back to YouTube, etc, etc. So, a while ago, I sort of was like, alright guys, I need a break, I need to step off, I need to just kind of pull back and just stop uploading to YouTube, because I'm not really enjoying it right now, and, you know, Pokemon's going poorly, nobody's watching Final Fantasy VII, even though I'm really enjoying the Let's Play, uh, I have like 20,000 subscribers, and I'm getting like 1,000 views per video, um, so I decided to just like step off and take a step back, and uh, what, I, what I came to find was that, um, not uploading really suited me. I, I originally planned on only taking like a maximum like month long break, and now it's been like it's been like six months or something. It's I, I don't know exactly how long it's been, but it's been a while. Um, I found that I really liked not uploading to YouTube. I kind of realized I'd, I'd been stressing myself out, um, and I already have a lot, had and still have a lot of uh, stress in my life, um, and YouTube was kind of adding to it and not really. I feel like YouTube had done everything it could for me as far as like my position in life. I don't think my standing in life is gonna increase anymore. I mean, when I say, what I mean by that is, you know, people dream of going big on YouTube and doing it full time, and um, that does still happen, but very rarely now. Um, YouTube has made some really uh, drastically altering changes um, to the way that the algorithms work to recommend certain channels, and I know that some of my videos are, are being recommended. I keep getting new comments on old videos and stuff, and. But for the most part, um, like, the, the stuff that I uploaded actively, the stuff that I was, like, keeping up with, wasn't going to be, like, I mean, I, I, nobody was going to find them on YouTube. Because um, basically the way that YouTube's algorithms work now is they're, they're basically recommending, like, PewDiePie and Markiplier and no one else. So uh, it's, it kind of became, like, a, a big stay big and get bigger and the little guys have a harder time getting there. And now, don't get me wrong, you still can rise up through the ranks, you still can build a channel uh, if, if you are looking to get into YouTube, but it's, it's much harder than it once was. And I simply just don't have that kind of dedication to the platform anymore. Um, so what I started doing uh, in the meantime, I didn't disappear off the internet, I started streaming on Twitch.tv. Um, I, I uploaded a couple of highlights and a couple of announcement videos, but eventually I just stopped doing anything that had anything to do with YouTube, and I just started um, just streaming. And I really enjoyed it, and uh, to this day my channel is still really small, I get maybe like 50 to 100 viewers uh, a stream depending on, on how many, um, or, or uh, rather what time of day it is and how many people are awake, because I often stream very late at night, but um, a lot of people um, kind of kind of poo-pooed that, they were like, no, that's a bad idea, why would you do that? Well, you only have 50 to 100 viewers here, you have 20,000 subs on YouTube, which yeah, is not that big anymore. 
um, in this day and age. Uh, and you know, why would you, this is a bad idea. A lot of people try to naysay it. And it was, I understand why they, why they were naysaying it because I was now on a platform that wasn't the one they knew me from. You know, these, these were like my YouTube fans coming in and, and saying, not all of you, of course, just a couple people. Um, coming and saying, like, hey, streaming is a bad idea, why would you do that? And the answer is just, I don't really care about the numbers and how much money I'm making, I just, I enjoy it more. Um, and uh, that really came down to it. it, it it's funny. Um, the interactions between broadcaster and commenter, uh, you know, community member, fan, whatever you want to call it, uh, it are way, way more civil on Twitch. Um, and, I mean, you do have, if you look at, like, some really big Twitch streams, like, like, Pripper or something like that, um, you're always gonna have, like, you know, or, like, especially any, like, big tournament, any fighting game tournament, any, you know, uh, MLG, any, uh, like, MOBA tournament, the, the League Interna uh, Dota International League, uh, Championship Showcase, anything like that, chat's gonna be a nightmare, yeah, that's true, that's always gonna be the case, um, but for smaller channels like mine, both my YouTube and my Twitch were both small channels, the interactions are just so much more pleasant. I think it has something to do with the fact that the interactions on Twitch are more immediate. So the people that you are, uh, you know, going in to try to bash or troll or whatever, um, are right there. You can see them react in real time to your, uh, to, to your comments. And when you say something that is either idiotic or, uh, or just straight off offensive or, or what have you, any sort of negative comment, uh, is gonna be either met, you know people people so I feel I, I almost feel like people just feel bad like they they see a more immediate effect uh, in what they're doing I mean there's always going to be trolls there's always going to be people going to be people who are just out there to cause trouble and you know rouse whatever negative emotions there are but on Twitch it just kind of comes down to all right fuck you you jackass I don't, I don't care and and it's it's more real it's more direct i feel like and, be, and just because of that the interaction is being better you get far fewer trolls and uh people just going out of their way to say dumb shit and just and and i don't mean to say that my youtube community was always a bunch of trolls and assholes that's it's not the, that's not true I, I did have a lot of commenters um that i, I didn't like interacting with uh, because they were demanding, controlling. Um, that, that's something that, that very much comes with a YouTube uh, channel, and in my opinion, having a younger fan base, I think uh, because I, I got very big on uh, Pokemon, um, that, that kind of happens. That's a, that's a very immature thing, is to think you, you, you can make demands of somebody like that, that you know, you're so invested in this. Uh, you know, when most older people, more mature people, don't really get that invested in a YouTube channel. If somebody does something that they're not necessarily into, it's not the end of the world, and they're not going to sit there and demand it change. Um, but uh, that, that was a lot of people. It wasn't most of you. Don't get me wrong. I'm not, I'm not saying that I, I hated all of you. It was just, you know, it was a, really a, a couple of bad apples spoil the bushel kind of thing. Um, there, there were a few bad apples, and um, I, I really have extremely, extremely few bad apples when it comes to Twitch. I would definitely have more bad apples uh, should my Twitch channel ever get bigger, but um, that's not really my concern right now. So the reason I say I was kind of running out of time on you know, putting this off to the last possible second was is because um, my, my efforts at Twitch really paid off uh, big time. Uh, this morning, it's about 3.30. Um, 3:35 a.m. right now at the time of this recording um, on uh, on Friday, uh, well Saturday uh, morning technically uh, the 10th. I don't know when I'm gonna upload this. Probably right after I'm done recording it and rendering it. But um, about four o'clock, I'm gonna wake up my parents, and then uh, around five o'clock, we're gonna leave the house and uh, head over to the uh, Philadelphia airport. And um, I'm gonna I'm going to be flying to uh, San Francisco International, um, and I'm gonna be working full-time uh, as a Twitch employee, as staff. Um, this is a, a real job. This isn't uh, just a YouTube, it isn't a, a YouTube or a Twitch partnership that could or could not be successful. This isn't uh, you know, a part-time job. This isn't being a super mod or anything. This is a, a full-time salary job. Uh, my job is, is called um, Partnerships Associate. Uh, basically, my, my job is to look for Twitch partners. Those are people with sub buttons, basically. Um, uh, my job will be to find new ones. Um, you know, maybe find people who are like just close, just barely, almost barely there, 
uh, to being a partner and just need a little guidance in the right direction and do that, you know, um, help them out, you know, refine them so that they can be partners, um, and also to provide support to current existing partners. So if any uh, any these big Twitch guys have a have a problem, they can come to me and I, I get it sorted for them. Technical, you know, relay technical support to them, or um, you know, maybe give them some pointers or, or suggestions or what have you. And and the, the things that qualified me for this job were the knowledge of the platform that I gained by streaming. And I may not be a big channel, but um, I've been told by many people that I'm a very good streamer. Um, and uh, and I'm inclined to believe them because my knowledge of the platform has landed me a job. Now I, d I did have some advantages coming in. Um, I was uh, I was hired. My boss is going to be John Howell, who you guys may have known at one point as S and D's or Sinwin a million years ago on YouTube. Um, he's one of the KB Mod guys, and he, he's a close friend of mine. And uh, that got me to a certain point. And I was actually very worried about favoritism and worried that John may have just hired me because we were friends and that I might not do well. That maybe I wasn't cut out for the job, but. Uh, he took me aside and he was like, look, I, kn I know you're worried about favoritism, um, and I want you to know that I ended up interviewing with five different people, and he was only one of them. Um, and the last three people were all uh, re really big guys at Twitch, really uh, really important people at Twitch. Um, a couple of whom you may know, uh, I'm not going to mention their names here, but... Uh, he was like, Th those three guys, I would normally be one of them, uh, John said, but I, I had to back off and I just had to let you speak for yourself. I couldn't be involved because we're, we're too close. Um, and he said the the three of them unanimously agreed that uh, that I was the person for the job among you know whoever else they were interviewing, um, which, which is uh, that was exactly what I needed to hear because it, it made me much more confident. Um, I going in, I was sure I was the man for the job, but of course you know those doubts settle in. I'm I'm a, I'm a worrier. I'm a doubter. Um, I'm a you know I'm, I'm a cynic, whatever you want to call me, but. Um, that that really reassured me that this was the correct decision, and uh, the fact that I'm I've landed. I mean, you guys know. For those of you who've been watching my commentaries for a long time, um, I've expressed many times that I, I was I'm not happy with my uh, wasn't happy with my uh, status in life. I had a job that I, I really didn't care much about. Um, very nice people that I worked for, but uh, I, it wasn't a full time job. I couldn't. Uh, afford a place on my own. I still live with my parents. I'm 25. I'm almost 26, and uh, still living with my parents. And that, that was something that bothered me. I, fe I felt I was in a career that I didn't care about, um, and I, I just felt like I was treading water and not making any progress uh, with my life. And then it turns out this, all this, inter all these interactions I had, all these connections I've been making, and all this time I've been spending streaming um, was exactly what I needed to get out of here. I'm, I'm moving across the country. It's it's terrifying. It's exciting. It's it's a whole lot of things, but um, it it's it is what it is. It's it's a uh, it's a very it's an incredible thing. Um, I'm really worried about it because I don't have a place to live yet. I have temporary housing for the weekend, and uh, and then I get to bum around for a couple of days at John's apartment uh, or house. I don't know what he has, and he's gonna put me up for a little while until uh, some other folks come out, and then might be putting me up in a hotel, but basically I, I'm in a rush to find an apartment. I'd really like to have a permanent address before I start work, and I start work the, the 19th, so I have, uh, you know, nine days to find an apartment, eight days to find an apartment, whatever. Um, it's really scary, but, you know, of course, I, of course I'm thrilled. I, I, I flipped out when I found out I had the job. It's been, it's been an emotional roller coaster because I'm, I'm balancing the fact that I, I'm finally getting my life on, on track, and I'm, I'm going to be working in the video game industry, and be working very closely with a lot of people who I, I very much admire, um, and balancing how stressed I am about trying to find a place and leaving my family and my friends and my dogs, most importantly, my dogs. Um, so it's it's been a lot of um, a lot of moments where I'm, I'm just I just start laughing because I don't know how to feel, and I'm just and a lot of a lot of periods of not feeling anything because I don't know how to feel because there's there's there it's such a good thing and it's a thing that has to happen a thing that I have to do but I'm sacrificing a lot uh, to go out there and basically I'm sacrificing comfort and proximity with the people I love uh, for for a life basically for getting on with my life starting my life um, and streaming led to all that I'm not saying that you should stream so you can work at Twitch, but, well, it couldn't hurt if that's your job. I mean, it's a, an incredible company to work for, looking into it. Absolutely incredible people that I'll be working for. You know, it, 
criticisms of the company, sure. People have their problems and, you know, whatnot. And if they're very, really unpopular with Reddit, Reddit still has a has a uh, grudge against them for the whole remove horror thing, but it's I'm not concerned with any of that, really. I, I really don't care. Um, let people criticize. I have my own criticisms of some of the company's policies. It doesn't matter. It, you're never going to be 100% happy with the place you're working at unless you're one of those cultists that works at Google, but... but um, I'm, yeah, I'm getting off track. Um, so, what does that mean for uh, this channel? Well, um, the only goal I have with this channel is that I want to finish Final Fantasy VII. Um, I left Final, Fan Final Fantasy VII unfinished uh, just because, you know, I, when, again, when I took my break, I planned on coming back after not long. Um, and that didn't end up happening, but I, I really, really want to finish Seven because Seven is my favorite game of all time. And um, I'm usually pretty good about finishing my Let's Plays. There are a couple of Let's Plays, at least on my main channel, there are a couple of Let's Plays that I left unfinished, like Killer is Dead and Pokemon, uh, uh, Heart Gold, and I think uh, there, there was another one somewhere in the past that I just gave up on. Um, but uh, I can't remember. But I'm usually pretty good about finishing them. Usually, like, pretty long games, too. Like, Sunshine took forever because I 100 percent of that game and everything. And had no idea what I was doing throughout the whole thing. But um, I, I don't, uh, don't want to leave 7 unfinished because it, it just feels wrong. Because I am so in love with that game and what an incredible story it is. And a lot of people haven't played it for themselves. And I, I keep getting messages every now and again saying, like, I, I never played Seven. And I was watching your Let's Play, and I want to know how it ends, and that breaks my heart. So I really want to finish Seven. I don't know when I'm going to be able to, because uh, when I fly out, um, I'm not going to have my computer. Um, I am bringing my PlayStation, which is what I was recording it on, but um, that's basically going to sit around useless. Um, really, I'm just packing it because it's cheaper than shipping it, and I have room in my uh, my luggage. So, but um, I will finish Seven eventually. Uh, but I don't know that I'm ever going to do anything else um, after that. I may start... Uh, I'm going to continue streaming once I'm out there. Uh, you know, having a job doesn't mean I'm done streaming. And I, I really love streaming and I love my community. Um, my, my small community. I know everybody's name. and I'm really big on chat interaction, so getting to know people and stuff. Um, so I'm going to go back to streaming as soon as possible. And, and maybe uh, maybe I'll upload some stream highlights and stuff uh, once you know on, on this channel. Um, once I get back into the groove with that, because um, I understand that streaming is not a perfect solution as far as as uh, you know participation goes. People, um, people, some people can't make it. Um, with my current schedule, I stream really late at night. Uh, that's gonna. I have no idea when I'm gonna stream once I get settled in in California. But um, I uh, I streamed. I started streaming like midnight Eastern Standard Time, and that was just too late for a lot of people. A lot of people have school and work and stuff, and. Um, there's like people in England, or I think five hours has it's like five in the morning for them, so like a majority of English people couldn't make it. Um, and that that's the problem with streaming. I mean, you can always watch the vods, true, but it's it's never the same. Watching a stream vod is not the same as actually being there, because to me, like as, as somebody who also watches streams a lot, um, one of the biggest things is being able to just talk to to the broadcaster and have that interaction. And I really have almost zero interest in any streams where people don't interact with their chats. Um, because I like to be part of the conversation. I like to talk to I mean, there's a couple people who I, I've learned this from. Uh, Carnage64 is a Final Fantasy VII speedrunner I've talked about extensively in the Final Fantasy VII Let's Play, and he's got fantastic chat interaction. He's got like five, 600 viewers all the time and 400 viewers, and he still is just constantly keeping up with chat. He responds to every single thing anybody direct, any, any, every single comment directed at him, he responds to. It's, it's really great. Um, and, uh, People who do that, you know, I, I admire that, and I, I really, uh, you know, that that sort of thing. Um, how did I even get to this? What am I talking about? Oh, yeah, that that's that's a major part of the interaction for me, a major part of the draw for uh, for streaming. So I understand that, you know, the VOD, watching the video on demand, the, uh, you know, the recording that's left after the uh, stream, watching a recording of a stream just isn't as fun. Um, I completely understand that, and I completely understand that uh, it doesn't work for everybody, but um, it's what I enjoy doing. Um, but with highlights, you know, highlights, you know, might get some content on here, and, you know, maybe you guys won't miss me as bad. It won't be the same, don't get me wrong, but, you know, Pokemon is, is definitely not going to be finished. Hargold is not going to be finished. Killer is Dead I gave up on even before I took a break, because Killer is Dead is not fun. 
That is a shit game. <laughs> but uh, 7 I will finish, and then after that I don't know if I'm ever going to be regularly uploading again. I, I would say it's not likely. Um, but I do want to thank you guys who have uh, kind of kept the faith alive and, you know, hoped that I would one day return. And I'm sorry to disappoint you. Um, but I, I do appreciate that sentiment that a lot of people wanted me to come back and you know I, I do hate to disappoint people, but it's just simply not what I enjoy doing anymore I really like not worrying about uploading to YouTube and uh, but I don't ever also at the same time I don't want to say uh, Never I never want to say never Because um, uh, that's so final I, you never know what could lie around the corner maybe you know five years from now I could be streaming full-time and Doing YouTube might uh, supplement that, so you know, supplement my my means of living. So maybe uh, maybe I will return to YouTube out of necessity. Maybe I'll suddenly get an itch for a great new series that doesn't work for for Twitch, and I'll end up uh, uploading to YouTube again because uh, you know I, I just had to get this idea. You never know. I, but I'm I'm gonna say it's not likely, but at the same time I don't. I'm gonna say not never. You know, it's, it's possible but not likely. Possible, not probable. We'll put it that way. Um, so that, that's what I've been doing, um, and I've, I've been meaning to. I've actually several times tried to record this uh, this explanation video of where I've been, and I just wasn't happy with it. And I always like, eh, I tried doing like the talking to my phone's camera a few times, and I never liked doing that. Um, so I, you know, I don't really, uh, I'm not really um, too worried about this one. I think this one turned out fine, but you know, I am sorry to do this uh, so late and keep you guys in the dark for so long and have so many of you come and ask me where I've been. You know, I'm sorry to do that to you, but um, that, that's where we stand now. Um, I think I think this new job is going to suit me fine. I think it's going to be perfect for me. I think it's exactly, I think I'm going to be great at it, and I think uh, it's exactly what I need to, to be happy. Um, but, uh, you know, just know that I'm, I'm thinking about you guys, and, you know, not a day goes by I don't, you know, sort of reminisce a little bit about about the YouTube days. And just to me, YouTube is a bygone era. In my opinion, YouTube is a dying platform um, for gaming. You know, you're always going to have your cat videos and stuff, but for gaming, um, it's really trying to legitimize itself, which means it's cutting out the smaller, scrappier channels. Um, not cutting them out, you're always going to be able to upload, but it's, it's becoming less and less viable as like a career option, and on top of that, you know, like I said, I just wasn't enjoying it anymore. That's the main thing. I don't care about how much money I was making. I really don't give a shit about the money. Um, the money was negligible, and it would have been nice to be a full-time YouTuber, sure, but, you know, I had other options. I had a full-time job, but money wasn't an issue. It's just that I enjoy streaming so much more. I just, the, the video on demand thing, the, the whole pre-recorded videos, it just doesn't suit me anymore. Um, again, I, I'm gonna finish seven, but that's that's about it. That's only, it's only because of the game I'm playing. Not even because that's not because of the platform. Not at all. Um, a couple of people have suggested that I stream the end of seven, but that's just that just doesn't feel right to me. Starting on one platform and ending on the other, that just that feels bad. I don't want to do that. You guys deserve an end of seven. You're gonna get it. Uh, for those few of you who actually watch it, and I'm sorry for the, for those of you who are Pokemon fans that hear me like shit on Pokemon. Uh, uh, and say like, oh, that's not gonna happen. And the interest, uh, the interest just isn't there anymore. The fact is, I'm just not that interested in Pokemon. I played X and Y, and they were like the best Pokemon games so far, in my opinion. But um, I'm just not into Pokemon like I used to be. I haven't been competitive battling. I haven't been, uh, you know, I played X once and was just done. I did, you know, I touched the, I did a little bit of the uh, end game, but barely any. Didn't get nearly as into. I tr I tried to. Uh, breed perfect IVs and my RNG was so bad I gave up. Even though you can like almost guarantee a five perfect IV Pokemon, I just, I I kept got, getting such bad rolls, I just, I was wondering if I was doing it wrong. I had to check my method like 12 times. I'm getting off track, but uh, I just don't have that much interest in Pokemon anymore and I was really dissatisfied with how the hard gold run was going. Um, so uh, so that that's officially abandoned, but get hyped for uh, the Ru Omega, I think it's Omega Ruby and Alpha Sapphire. I can't remember which Omega and Alpha it is, and I really hope that I'm not, I'm not getting that wrong, because <laughs> as YouTube comments go, if I mix those up, then I will never hear the end of it in the comment section. But And I will be actively monitoring these comments, I've got, I'm kind of neurotic about reading comments about me. But... Um, 
I think I'm coming to the end of the game here. I am on the last level. I, I, I spent a little bit of time farming here towards the end, but uh, you're going to see. Uh, I, I think I'll just leave this run, and maybe I'll speed up the boss fight, the final boss fight. Um, but what, what, I, I'm not sure what I'm going to do yet, but what what ends up happening is I get in here, and it's like a 30-minute run now. It ends up with like a 45-minute run because the boss fight is so long because I have to play it so carefully because I kind of get like overzealous and goofy about it and then I almost die on the boss so many times and the boss is actually funny enough the boss is not that difficult I honestly in my opinion the boss of this game isn't the hard part if you can make it to the boss you can usually beat the boss it's getting to him that's the hard part um, but uh, he he almost houses me on quite a few occasions the only thing that saves me is an item I have called guardian heart uh, which gives you a shield of like it's only like a 60 HP shield but it's actually it makes you more formidable than you think because as long as the shield is active, um, you can't take more than 60 damage in one hit. You can you, That shield kind of counts as like a separate health bar, so if, if some guy clocks you for like a thousand damage, and you only have like a hundred health, let's just say for this, this would never happen, but if you get hit for a thousand damage, you have a hundred health with a 60 HP shield, you're not gonna die, because you can't take more than 60 HP in damage in one hit. Um, and then the shield recharges by not getting hit for like, I think it's like five or six seconds, something like that. Um, but, uh, it, I just thought it was really interesting. It was, it was, the Guardians are, basically, I, my, my only goal was to, my only ability, uh, rather, my only method of staying alive was to run away until my Guardian's heart would reactivate, and then I could go in and safely damage him a little bit, and then I would inevitably get clocked in the face, and it was, uh, it was pretty funny. But, uh... I'm not going to him quite yet. I think I farm it up a little, little bit more. Um, so he almost kills me quite a few times. I, I end up, you know, making it obviously. Um, but uh, that, that was a that was a really fun fight. Just goofing off with uh, Providence, the boss of the game. Um, really can't recommend this game enough. I I love this game. Honestly, I've dumped so many hours into it for such a simple, simple game gotten a ton, ton, ton of replayability off of it. It's, uh, it's a really just goddamn good game. Um, it has a hard, hard learning curve, really harsh learning curve. Not as bad as FTL. If you played FTL, I still, to this day, have not beaten FTL. I've been playing a little bit of Advanced Edition. I've been getting my ass slammed. I'm playing on easy, too. I can't beat that fucking game. That game is ridiculous. That is a hard, hard game to learn. Um, and I'm, I'm just not very tactical anyway, but... Um, That'll do it for me, guys. Um, I'll, I'll try to keep in contact. The best way to keep in contact with me is Twitter. Um, I pretty much am always constantly tweeting. We'll see how much I tweet uh, in the coming days when my job changes and I'm not as bored with my job. But, um, you know, we'll see. We'll see. Um, I, I, I do tweet a lot, though, so Twitter's the best way to get a hold of me if you have any questions or want to, wanna, you know, ask me how, how's it going. I, I respond to most of my tweets. I'm usually pretty good about that, and of course check out my Twitch channel, because that's that's where I'm most active, but I, I won't be for a little while, because I'm not going to have my computer again. Um, but, uh, you know, it's just twitch.tv slash blacklightattack, spelled exactly the same as my YouTube channel, and if, uh, if my stream, my new stream schedule, whatever that ends up being, if that fits you, then, you know, become become part of the part of the Raccoon City. Raccoon City is what I, I call my, uh, my viewers and my, subs well, subscribers specifically. This is subscribing is a different service on Twitch, but um, yeah, I just wanted to let you guys know I'm thinking of you. Uh, so the rest of this fight, uh, I'll just let this go. It's going to be commentary list, and you can see you can stick around for this fight if you care about the gameplay. If not, you know this is just a backdrop. This is just what I've been playing the most of on my. This is like kind of my game on Twitch. Um, but uh, you know you you don't have to watch it if you don't want to. It's you're not going to miss too much. But if you're interested in the game, you know stick around and watch how I beat this guy because it's actually a pretty fun fight. I have getting chunked by like the easiest ability to avoid he has. It's like the easiest ability to dodge and I take it right to the face like an idiot. But yeah, the, once the commentary ends, uh, I was talking about speeding it up, but I think it's, um, you, you can watch it at this speed, it'll be fine. So, anyway guys, uh, thank you for the uh, continued uh, interest and whatnot in the, in the channel and uh, I love you guys, miss you guys. Um, and uh, yeah. Leave me a comment below. <laughs> what, what about? I don't know. You, you decide. I don't give a shit anymore. It's up to you. Take it easy.